Welcome into a new Buff Stampede Radio Adam Munster Tiger, the publisher of BuffStampede.com, joined by football analyst William Gardner. And uh, William, today is not just tax day, it's April 15th. It's also the opening of the spring transfer window for non graduates. I got my phone over here. I'm ready right. for any news that comes out. Now, Colorado does have another six spring practices to go through, so, or five more practices to go through. So um, you hope it's a little bit quiet until that point, but you you know, there's going to be some defections. We already know Miles Slusher plans to enter the transfer portal. Um, I I feel like there's going to be kind of this roller coaster of emotions with the fans, but the strategy I would take on it is take the overview of it. Was the roster last summer better than the spring roster last year? The answer is yes. Is the spring roster this year better than the fall roster last year? Yes. And so as long as overall you're making those strides and filling the gaps where you need it, that that's the key. And there are going to be a couple of names that maybe that surprise you that maybe you didn't expect to go in. Um, but uh, generally it's, it's kind of taking the, the, the bigger view of the situation when it comes to Colorado. Right. I mean, I, I'm a little surprised to see Savion on Washington, but I'm not overly surprised, I guess. Um, I, I suppose he took, you know, I, I hesitate to speak for a player. He'll have his own reasons, but, you know, maybe he saw that he wasn't going to beat out Khalil Benson or something. I don't know. Hard to say, but, uh, you know, we're going to need some more offensive linemen. Um, cause I think, you know, generally speaking, you need about eight. I've never seen this. I've never seen a team go through a season, and not lead, need at least eight guys, uh, due to injuries and sickness and whatever. So, uh, I'm comfortable with about seven of them. So I'd like to see a couple more guys there and we'll see who else leaves. Uh, but could be a crazy couple of weeks. Arkansas offensive tackle. Andrew Shambly is one of those guys that has already been targeted by Colorado staff. He was a graduate already in the pro in the portal, Indiana defensive tackle. Philip Bleedy is another one to keep an eye on. And Colorado is going to be in the market for a quarterback during the spring transfer window. And Wisconsin quarterback transfer Nick Evers is somebody to, to keep an eye on. Uh, we're we're going to circle back and we will do a lot of analysis over the transfer portal stuff. But because we're recording this the morning of April 15th before things have really taken off, um, we don't want this podcast to be too outdated. Uh, any, any last thoughts on the portal before we move on? Or is there a number that you have in your mind in terms of a uh, number of guys you're expecting to, to enter the transfer portal from Colorado? I really don't. I mean, I think if we went through, uh, you know, the eligibility chart, we probably all would would pick the similar names and such. Yeah. But uh, I think we'll, you know, a lot of things are going on inside the practices and inside the locker rooms. We're not necessarily we don't necessarily know, and you don't know. You know, people think that there's only one or two reasons why people transfer. You know, whether they're not playing enough or whatever. But there's any number of reasons why guys transfer in and out. So what what we'll end up seeing leaving Colorado is hard to say. Um, but I don't feel like we're going to lose anybody that, that that's, that's going to hugely impact our season. Again, don't want this podcast to get too outdated. Uh, you mentioned Savion Washington. Just to clarify, he is not officially named. There's just kind of some speculation there at this point. So, again, stay tuned to buffstampede.com. We're going to have this tracked, and actually when I get off – this podcast with you, William, I'm going to create an updated thread on our Inside the Herd message board. And and so we're going to be tracking this in the coming weeks. Today's episode is brought to us by Macaulay Capital Fractional CFO Services. Is your business looking for financial guidance and support, but not yet big enough to hire a full-time CFO? Well, we have a solution for you. Hiring a fractional CFO who can work with your business on a part-time basis you get the benefit of having a seasoned financial expert on your team without the commitment or expense of a full-time hire. And here's the best part. It's likely that a partnership with Macaulay Capital will be a win-win situation, meaning that your business will make more money from the guidance of a fractional CFO than the total cost of partnering with us. For more information or to set up a meeting, please visit MacaulayCapital.com. That's M-C-C-A-U-L-E-Y Capital.com. As far as spring ball in Boulder goes, have you had any takeaways since our last podcast that we recorded? Yeah, there's a few things. I think that there's a lot better chemistry and more togetherness on this team than there was last spring. And I think that that stands to reason since you got a lot of guys coming back this time that weren't here last year. 
Uh, I think that uh, Coach Prime learned some things about the importance of that as well. And I think the team chemistry issue was an issue for real uh, in the fall. And so there's a lot more work being put into uh, uh, bringing these guys together. And I also think that has to do with the le- sort of a higher level and older level of guys that they're bringing in. Um, uh, and, and so I'm seeing that already, whether it's in the weight room or on the practice field, that these guys seem to have more connection and play better that way. Uh, I think there's more focus on discipline um, and it's more competitive. Uh, it, it's hard to miss uh, Warren Sapp's mouth out there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, I does I think seems to fire up guys and get things going. And then uh, what the other the other big guy is George Hegman, right? Is, is did I get his name right? The director of leadership and engagement. Yeah, yeah, because I see him barking back and forth yeah. with us a, a lot of times, and I think that sort of picks up the the level of of what they're doing out there. And so I think there's uh, 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 I don't know more of a sense of urgency, more of a sense of almost professionalism, maybe is a word. Um, and they're getting more done. And, and, uh, I, I just think that we got a higher level of players than we had last spring. And, and, and so I think as we each year goes by with prime that we're going to get more settled as a team, even with all the changes through the portal. So, I mean, that's my first thought. Yeah. I mean, the, the recruits I've talked to that have visited Colorado this spring, and, and there's obviously going to be a, a huge weekend, uh, for the spring game. And, and again, stay tuned to buffstampede.com. We've got a, a different message board thread breaking all that stuff down. But uh, a lot of them talk about the competitiveness that they see. And Corbin Lazier, right. a, a tight end recruit, uh, he said, I- I've been to a bunch of places and in- in- it's just on a different level at Colorado right now. And so it, it is, I think, part of that um, NFL mentality that if you're not getting the job done, we're going to replace you. And so there is a sense of urgency in the spring at Colorado right now that um, you know, in years past, prior to Coach Prime, uh, spring ball was, I, I wouldn't say laid back, you know, they're they are getting work in and they're getting coaching right. and whatnot, but there wasn't, I don't know if you use this word, you might have, the, the urgency that right, you really right. feel with with every workout, with every practice now. Well, and I think that that speaks to the, some of the level of the people that he's bringing in to speak to the team and such, you know, with with Mariucci and 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 uh, Mark Slareth and people like that coming in who are highest, really honestly got the highest level of the game and telling them what it takes to do this. And those are guys that these guys at their age can look up to and say, well, that that guy's been there and done it. So, um, you know, I mean, just on the offensive line, you know, you, you it, it seems like there's a pretty clear starting five working itself out right now, but you know, that ain't set. And, and Tyler Johnson's going to make some noise before all said and done come fall when he gets healthy and we'll see who they bring in. So there's a level of competitiveness uh, out there this year um, and not, you know, all the way down, you know, in de- in terms of some depth too, I think that makes a huge difference. And there's just there, I think the coaches are setting that tone that you got to fight for everything, and uh, that's really making a difference. Yeah, Coach Prime's Rolodex continues to impress, and what, we knew that was going to be the case, but it just keeps happening with different people that are showing up. And if you haven't gone on the the pregame show, and I think it's up on Well Off Media and Reach the People as well. Uh, the Steve Mariucci and the Mark Schlereth speeches to the team yeah. prior to Saturday, Saturday scrimmage are both must watch speeches, v- both very. I, and I love Mariucci's point of, you know, everybody's eyes are are on you. Some people are cheering for you. Some people are cheering against you, but everybody's eyes are right. on you. And uh, Mark Schlereth, just uh, a great message about what, what teamwork means and has mattered to him in his life. So that, that was really cool stuff. Some of those speeches in the team room, it's like, yeah, you, I feel like you're just kind of reciting cliches, but both those right. uh, people really had uh, a great messages to the team. Well, it's clear had a heck of a career, you know, I mean, you know, given all of his injuries, the things that he overcame, I mean, talk about tenacity and, and sticking it out. And that, that story he tells of, you know, after his senior year at Idaho, he had to beg to get on the field from the doctors in the first place. And, you know, then his friend took him to his workouts and that's how he made people notice. I mean, you know, the, the message there is don't give up, keep, keep working hard, keep trying. So I think it uh, I think that stuff sinks into guys. And I think it after a while, it it sort of becomes that's the norm of what you expect in this program now is to be like that, you know. So it's not just just lip service. It's just more or less that's sort of the background sort of I don't know, like 
cosmic background radiation for the smart people on the board. You know, it's sort of there and it sort of permeates and 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 you you after a while, that's just what's expected in this program. All right, let's real quick just go position by position, share any thoughts that we have through nine spring practices. We're not going to talk about every player because every player is not still going to be in the program in a couple months. And we're going to continue to kind of evaluate these positions. But uh, at quarterback, Shadur Sanders is Shadur Sanders. Nothing that's happened out there right. this spring has surprised me. He's out there dealing it and um, seems a little bit more, seems more comfortable in this offense now that, um, you know, that that he's got that comfort with Pat Shermer. Ha have you had any takeaways there? Yeah, I think he also is benefiting from having more talent in the offensive line and more size up there in front of him, and he's starting to really sort of get the nuances and the little things down. He's he's, he's showing more leadership on the field than I had seen before. Like, you know, uh, there was a play I saw in one of the recent videos where a perfect pass bounced off the receiver's chest and the defender picked it off, and he went running down there to give a hard time to the, to the receiver, not, you know, cussing him and everything else, but just kind of, you know, jazzing him and everything. And, and I think that's that's leadership, you know. People don't think of that as leadership. They think it's cussing and yelling and screaming. But sometimes it's, um, you know, letting people know you're there and you're on their side, whatever. So I think there's a level of leadership coming from him. I think Ryan Staub has really stood out this spring. Um, you know, not that, you know, I haven't seen a whole lot of, of, of the other two, Destin Wade and Walter Taylor, but I think Ryan Staub is continuing to impress me as a backup, but I think they're going to probably look for somebody else. Yeah, you know, like I mentioned, I think they're going to be in the market for for a quarterback. So again, don't want to spend too much time because these positions are going to evolve. But yeah, I think right. I think it's pretty safe to say at this point that you know Ryan Staub's running too. Yeah, for sure. And running back, uh, I think that group has done enough this spring to say, okay, if they don't have a well balanced offense. If uh, the ground game is not effective, it's not because they don't have talent at the running back position, right? right? They, they've got four or five guys, if you want to include Charlie Offerdahl, who got some really nice tough yards in that scrimmage on Saturday against the first team off uh, first team defense. Um, they've got they've got the pieces there at that position. Now, do you want to add another piece there for depth purposes? Because that's a position where guys get banged up. That would make sense. But um, in terms of the top level talent at that position with Michael Welch coming on campus and uh, being a dog from day one, you feel really good about that group. And we felt good about that group going into last year now, yeah. though, too. Right. So um, they're going to need that offensive line. And we expect that to happen to, to massively improve, especially on the interior to get that push to, to let those guys uh, have success. Yeah. And they're going to have to figure out a rotation or a way to use those guys. That makes a lot of, that makes more sense than what we saw last year. You know, clearly Dylan Edwards has, has upped his game significantly. I love the kind of um, camaraderie he has with Welch and the two of them kind of, you know, putting a chip on their shoulder saying, you know, we're going to take over this disposition. And then, you know, hearing that uh, McCaskill is coming back to, to where he was a couple of years ago is, is very exciting. And then, you know, the guy that always gets overlooked is Stavion Wilkerson to me. And, and, and I think he's a much better player than most people think. And he's always a, a, a guy you can count on to get, get, you know, some yardage for you and do some blocking and whatever. So it's a good group. Um, again, you know, a little more depth, might one more guy maybe, maybe uh, would be good just because you, you lose guys over the course of the season. But uh, those top four as good a four as we've had in a long time. And I think everybody kind of, I don't know what their reaction was, but there there was a stretch when Alton McCaskill had the no contact jersey on again. And maybe yeah. you're thinking, oh, here we go again. But it, it was a concussion he revealed on his YouTube page. Yeah. Uh, and he's since shed that no contact jersey. And in some recent practices, he's has, had some nice short yardage runs yeah. where uh, yeah. there, there was a play here recently where – two defensive backs met him at about the one yard line and he powered through them to get in the end zone. Yeah. So that, that's good to see. Yeah. And then, you know, Michael Wells, boy, you know, yeah. not, not, to, not to pick on uh, Shiloh, but when he trucked him, it's like, boy, that, that kid can really run over people. He's, he's going to be exciting to watch. <laughs> at receiver, Omari and Miller has been kind of the, the talk of spring ball with the fact that Will Shepard and Cordell Russell are on campus um, and early during spring ball, Jimmy Horn was dealing with a hamstring injury. He's now back in the mix, but there's been extra reps for Amari and Miller out there, and he's taken advantage of them. And uh, it seems like every day when you log on to Well Off Media and go through the practice footage, there's at least one catch 
that Omari and Miller makes that you actually rewind it a few seconds and watch again. Right. right. He needs to turn he needs to turn that into the you know on on game day in the fall. I mean, if there's one position where there's always been a spring hero and a and a fall zero, it's wide receiver. It always seems to be some guy who just lights it up in, in spring and then doesn't show up. So he needs to pick that up on game day. I think the other guy that's I, uh, really has impressed people, Lejante Wester. Yeah. You know, was not surprising with his speed, but uh, you know, from what I hear, he's uncoverable by some pretty good defensive backs. Yeah, he's definitely lived up uh, to, to the hype at, at slot receiver, and and Travis is Travis. Do we even have to right. spend time on him as a receiver? Yeah. Yeah. Or is anything else? I mean, he, he's just a guy you just want to wait and show up. You just want Saturdays in the fall to get here just to watch him. Yeah, we'll talk more about him when we get to to talking about the defense of backfield because uh, it's interesting what they're doing with him. Yeah. Tight end has been kind of a quiet position, and I, I think a little part of this might be the fact that as media members, we haven't had an opportunity to, to interview Brett Bartoloni, who moved moved over from being the receivers coach last year to being the tight ends coach this year. You do, do see Shaman Mateyer working with the first team offense, uh, but we're kind of waiting on that update from Coach Bartoloni. Like, how is Savell Smalls look there? Is Morgan Pearson going to stay there? Um What's that going to look like? They are going to add Sam Hart, an Ohio State transfer at the position this summer. Um, So I I still don't really have a strong feeling for how important this position is for Colorado under Pat Shermer. Do you have a a sense there? Well, the only thing I can say is, you know, it's not showing up in the films necessarily so much as what we see. uh, It's not clear what they're doing with the tight end, but they're certainly recruiting the heck out of the position. I mean, they're bringing in some guys. So they're certainly trying to stock that position for the future. So I think they uh, uh, want it to be something. I think Shermer, being an NFL guy, understands the value of a tight end and the kind of mismatches that they present for you. So um, I'm hopeful that that's a, a bigger element of the offense moving forward. You touched on the offensive line earlier. Mentioned the fact that Tyler Johnson, you know, hasn't been practicing. We expect him to be um, potentially one of the starting guards because of the the experience that he has at that position, the success he's had there. So it, with him being out, it has not been a surprising development in terms of the guys that have been taking those reps with the first team. And that's Jordan Seen at left tackle, Tyler Brown, Justin Mayers at guard, Hank Zelenskis at center, and Khalil Benson at right tackle. Now, William... Going into spring ball, I posed who should be the starting five for that first practice, and you weren't ready to put Jordan Seaton out there. And I think everybody that listened to that segment understood your reasoning. It had nothing to do with the fact that mm-hmm. Jordan Seaton isn't a special talent. It's the fact that he's a true freshman early in Rowley. Have you seen enough out of him through nine practices to, to now where you feel would feel comfortable with him being the starting left tackle on day one? I don't know that I'm there yet, but I'm I'm certainly highly impressed with his abilities and his talent. Um, I'd like to see the rest of spring, and let's see what happens in fall camp. I think there's some things he really still needs to polish up, and he certainly needs to keep building on his strength. But seeing the way he works in the weight room, I don't have any any concerns really so much. I think he's going to be ready if we do it. I'd like to see us bring in. I'd like to see us bring in three more offensive linemen, including a tackle. But um, to be perfectly honest, he's kind of the starter right there because out of default, I mean, there's not anybody else really that, that, that could fill that spot at this point. I guess you could, you could spot Benson over there. You know, the guy I'm, I'm really waiting to see is Tyler Johnson, because he could play guard or tackle, quite frankly, you know, 700 snaps in 11 games at Houston last year at, ta- at guard. So he's the real thing. Um, I'm a little, well, I'm, I guess I'm not too disappointed in you carry Walker yet. I, I didn't have super high hopes. Uh, you know, I was one of those that thought Zelenskis was going to be the guy at center anyway. So that development doesn't surprise me, but I still feel like you carry Walker's a guy that can help us. And so that's my seven that I think I would be comfortable playing at this point. And then you're waiting to see what happens with a Philip Houston, Kareem Harden, and, you know, or is Isaiah Jada ever going to be anything? And uh, I still think that with, you know, 12, 13 scholarship guys left, see if uh, Savion Washington sticks around. Um, but I'd like to see two or three guys come in from the portal that are good players at the same level that we brought in earlier. Yeah, but I should have mentioned. Yeah, I should have mentioned your, your, your Curry Walker has gotten some reps with the first team O-line as well. Yeah. So they they, yeah. they, they, do, they are rotating. It's not a, you know, a set yeah. 
set group at this point. But this is, uh, uh, I think if you look on offense in terms of transfer portal needs, backup quarterback, and then still a line is, is still up there, right? And especially yep. if you lose a couple guys, uh, because then, you're, you're going to need to fill fill up, a, a, you know, in terms of numbers of scholarship guys at that position. Well, and, you know, again, you know, you're know, you not going to go through a season without playing eight or nine guys most seasons. Um, you know, and uh, I know it's not a high – bar to clear but this is clearly a substantially better offensive line than what we had last year just in terms just in terms of size you know but but the size and the talent that we have at all five positions so far this spring is a significant upgrade over what we had out there last last fall i think i think it receiver is probably one position you don't need to add right i, I think with cameron mckell yeah. and draylon miller coming in and in cordell russell and will shepherd come in i mean they've they, they've got bordering on embarrassment of riches at that position yeah, for sure yeah and hopefully you know enough really top of level talent that they can um you know use uh uh travis hunters more sparingly perhaps let's move over to defense on the defensive line it seems like torian carter's made a strong impression during his first spring with the Buffs and, and Shane Cox has been running with the ones. Uh, Chidozi Wanquo was in there. Mari McNeil. Uh, Anquan Barnes has gotten reps. They're, they're rotating a lot yeah. of guys through there. Chaz Wallace uh, had a big play on sat, uh, during Saturday yeah. scrimmage. And then I don't know if you throw Quincy Wiggins and, and Oaken Lola into that mix. They're cross-training guys at different techniques. Yeah. And there's some guys that it's hard to – know whether I should categorize them on our eligibility right. chart as a defense alignment or more of an edge guy, but a lot of guys rotating through there. Yeah. It sounds like they're not done. They're going to keep trying to add there as well. Right. Um, but that, that is a group that is so much better than it was last spring. I mean, it's, you go back to, to the guys they were running with last spring and uh, it's almost an entirely different group outside of uh, really Shane Cox. Um, was Amari McNeil on campus last spring? Yeah, I don't think I he think got he on was, campus all this. Was he okay? Oh, was I thought he was here in the spring. I thought he was. Maybe, but, but yeah, I yeah. mean, this is, this is by and large, aside from a couple pieces, a, a newer group. Yeah. <laughs> Any think, guys that, that have stood out to you there? Well, I mean, you mentioned them all. I mean, uh, what what's impressive to me is that there, the, there's a wide variety of guys who are who are showing things. You know, Quincy Wiggins had a, had some big plays off the edge. You know, and it's six six two eighty kind of a guy. He's he's clearly a hand in the dirt kind of a guy to me. But you know, Shane Cox, I think, has had a very strong spring and and been very impressive. Um, and he's a guy who only knows one speed. Torian Carter's kind of been the talk of the of the spring camp in terms of the defensive line. Um, and certainly, you know, coming with his background, that that's not to be unexpected. And Nwankwo, I think, is is what we expected. And Barnes is, is flashing now and then. If he ever, if, if Anquan Barnes ever fully, ex, you know, expands to his talent level, he's going to be something. So what I like is I'm seeing a variety of different guys do things. And like you said, we're we're way ahead of last year, both in terms of the depth and the talent and the size. We're a lot bigger up front, I think, this time around. So it's very encouraging so far to me. And, and like you said, um, uh, still going after some guys. Had that kid from Houston. I think they're looking at pretty hard uh, for defensive tackle. Samuel Okunlola has gotten uh, quite a bit of run with, with the first team yeah. defense. And another guy has with Arden Walker out this spring after having hand surgery is a guy that we both like and that earned a lot of praise last year, but didn't play a whole lot because he was a true freshman last year. And that's Tajay McCoy. Right. Um, he has got a, a very quick first step and has had a few opportunities this spring yeah. to really show off that explosiveness in the, the, the opposing backfield. Yeah, you, know, you know, he he and Eric Brantley were guys I was going to mention it when we, you know, sort of talked about the edge or the buck position. But uh, again, it's kind of hard to tell who's who's what in this particular defense. But uh, Tajin McCoy is a guy that everybody's been talking about uh, this this camp and and his pass rush. And, and I think that one of the things he's got to work on is making sure he's stout at the point of attack for the run game. But uh, I think he's going to be a star. You know, Eric Brantley's shown a really explosive first step uh, off the edge, and he's exciting to look at, you know, and there's just a, a, you know, Arden Walker, I think, showed last fall that he's a really real good player at this level. So I think that that position, when you look at it in terms of the the, organ, the, uh, the eligibility chart, it looks a little bit thin. But then again, some of those guys that are going to play that are listed under defensive line. So um, I think there's some really quality 
players there who are going to make some noise for us. But uh, I, I think those two young guys are what have stood out to me, uh, McCoy and, and Brantley, from spring so far. And, of course, you know, we're, we're all waiting on B.J. Green. So he's sort of the, the star that, that this off to the – off stays left or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, B.J. Green will get on campus uh, this summer. He's uh, finishing up his coursework at Arizona State. At linebacker, we know this is a position that they're going to attack the spring transfer portal with. Um, one note here is Jeremiah Brown has been working at linebacker. He kind of did both last spring, but then we right. saw him practice more on the edge during the season. He was one of Colorado's special team stars last year, kind of quietly. Him and Jaden Milliner Jones were the two guys that were kind of playing almost across the board on all the different special teams units. So that's where he's been lining up. But it, it's been Lavata Bentley and Trevor Woods running with the first yeah. team. And then we expect that competition yeah. to to get ramped up here this summer. And I and I think both of those guys have had really good springs. I think Bentley has taken his game up a notch and really starting to to get understanding of the game and, and more comfortable in there. And I think Trevor Woods is starting to get to uh, make that transition of being closer to the line of scrimmage and things happening faster. And I think he's made some real plays this, this uh, spring. I'd like to see him put, put on another 10 pounds, but I think this is a position where they need to bring in a couple of guys too, to be honest with you. In, in Brendan Gant and Jalen Wester, a couple of wild cards here, but yeah, this right. is a position that's going to be continued to evolve here in the coming months at cornerback, we had a chance to talk to Kevin Mathis, the position coach, last week and, and got a real breakdown there. And uh, you've got three guys that, that have really kind of emerged at that position. I mean, obviously, well, Travis Hunter, uh, yeah, Preston Hodge, and, Cor and, and uh, DJ McKinney as well. Is Carmani McLean in Tallahassee? He is not. Is he is. Uh, he was actually at practice. On, yeah, he's working his way back, his conditioning. And so um, he's been refuting those those rumors. And uh, and I I still think it's going to be hard based on the fact that he has not gotten these reps this spring for him to beat out, you know, an experienced guy like Preston Hodge or a DJ McKinney who had all that experience yeah. last year. But, um, you know, hopefully he just continues to stay the course because I think Coach Prime's tutelage is exactly what he needs. And uh, you, yeah. you do hope that he's around for the long haul. And I was just kidding you about the Tallahassee thing. Obviously, it was sort of funny on the board to watch the the people doing backflips about whether he's going to be there or not. But he, he's clearly way ahead of where he was last year when he didn't get here until late in summer uh because of high school graduation and such so i think he's getting he's getting more reps now but i think probably you know the guy who is the talk of spring so far would you say is dj mckinney yeah because his length is, is really impressive and so he's he's a natural he could play nickelback if they needed to but because yeah. of that length i think he's perfect on the outside whereas preston hodge has got that versatility and travis hunter is adding nickel back to his bag yeah. and what that. coach mathis said is hey we want Travis on the other team's best receiver. And it's not always the case nowadays where it, that best receiver is on the outside. So him working at nickel back this spring now gives them the ability during the season in 2024 to have him kind of shadow that, that top receiver wherever he is. I still am a little bit hesitant to think that Travis Hunter is just going to be a straight nickel back. I think if he's in that role, it's because the other team's best receivers there, right? Yeah, and it also gives you some more flexibility with what you can do with him. You know, I think it's easier to bring him off the edge on a blitz and and be just such a gifted, talented player that uh, I think you want to have more options for him than simply, you know, uh, flipping his hips and running with, with, with one receiver. You want to have more versatility with what you can do with him on defense. And we can't forget about Carter Stoutmeyer. It sounded like he was going to move to safety. Um, Coach Mathis said that, you know, he'd probably be more of a nickelback cornerback when he comes back from injury, but he's been dealing with that this offseason. Uh, at safety, they added Omarion Cooper, who moved over from the cornerback's room. Coach Mathis said that they like his ability to cover tight ends as a safety. What are your thoughts on him in that role? Well, I think he looks great. And, you know, I don't know who somebody was saying he was a silent assassin out there, but uh, I think I think what we've seen from him at safety so far has been very promising. Uh, he's a guy that can play all five roles back there if you need him to. So he gives you a lot of versatility. And I think he's a guy I think they're trying to find ways to keep him on the field because he's he's just that good of a player. Obviously, Shiloh Sanders, Cameron Silman, Craig, top guys at that position. 
Seen Herman Smith make a few plays out there this spring. One guy I really like is Jaden Milliner Jones. I mentioned him as a big special teams guy last year. He's been dealing with an injury as well. Uh, is this a position they need to still add it, or do you like the the depth overall? Now we we talked about Miles Slusher entering the portal. Uh, how do you feel about just the overall depth at safety? Well, I think there's a lot of guys there that you can move around, and, and I don't know. It depends on who who you think you can realistically get. I think you always try to add better players if you can. Um, I, I like that group as a whole. Um, there's some guys in there that, that still may show up and do some things, but uh, um, you know, you got two safeties on the field, and, and I got I think there's three or four guys, maybe five, maybe as many as five guys I'd be comfortable playing at any given time. So I I feel good about it. Any, uh, I, I don't think we have a whole lot in terms of the specialists at this point. We know Mark Fassett, uh is pretty darn good, and uh, Mod is pretty automatic. Now the question is going to be, okay, kickoffs. But uh, I, I have not heard anything new in terms of how that that group is looking this spring. Usually, you you really get into a lot of that special teams work once you get into to preseason camp. Right, and you haven't seen a lot. You're not going to do kickoffs and such in spring ball uh, for most part. Where they the, the, the Daniel Gerlock kid came back to Boulder, kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. a, a former Boulder High kicker. Uh, he's, I mean, he's a walk on, and and he's got. A, it looks like a pretty strong leg. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if he's factoring into the mix, but hey, if he can prove he gets that that kickoff into the end zone on a consistent basis, maybe he will have a role on this team. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, that's certainly a thing that's a big deal on the board and amongst the fans. So, uh, and the, you know, the fact that he's a walk on too, doesn't take up a scholarship. Doesn't hurt. All right. We got a few questions here. First one is from JT Mitchell, 83. He asked who's coaching the defensive tackles since coach Sal is M I a uh, we've addressed this before, I believe William. And I think because the school has not come out and made any announcements, there's, Maybe people that just haven't uh, gotten the update that Damian Lewis is working with that group, has been working with that group all offseason. Now, in terms of is he going to be named the full-time defensive line coach? That's something that uh, we're waiting on the, the, the school to announce at some point. But um, Damian Lewis has got a pretty good resume, William. He's a, a former D Cincinnati Bengals defensive line coach. Uh, like Warren Sapp, he started as a defense alignment at Miami, 12th overall pick of the 2001 draft, 10 years as a player in the NFL. He was with, uh, I'm sorry, he was the, the Seattle Seahawks defense line coach previously. He was with their organization uh, for three years and uh, or four years from 2020 through 2023. Also spent time at FIU in 2019, 46 years old. So he's got uh, a lot of different experience and, and he has coach that position in the NFL. Yeah, I think he brings a different, you know, a whole different sort of approach and, a, and aspect to it than uh, Krusty Sal, who I, I love. But uh, having Damian Lewis and, you know, they changed the designation on Warren Sapp to be a graduate assistant so he can be out there on the field too. And he's, I'm, I'm sure he's out there working with those defensive tackles, working on their technique. But uh, I think that uh, I watched uh, one video with him out there, him and – him and um, Phil Lodehold talking to the team and, and they both are fiery individuals, you know, are demanding a lot of, a lot from their players. So I'm, um, I'm, I feel very good about uh, what they've got working the defensive line down there. Um, you know, like you said, whether it ends up being official for the fall or not, I think they've got somebody out there that really knows what he's doing, teaching them right now. Monty guy asked, why does Colorado have so many four and five star quarterbacks come to visit, but they never are able to, to get one uh that's a pretty loaded question i the I mean, the April simplest 50. the simplest answer is that there's a lot of competition for those guys right 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 four or five star quarterbacks are the unicorn and everybody wants them and then you know it's april 15th how many of those guys have committed already i you know they're there's still several of those guys that we've brought in that are still possibilities for us so you know we'll wait and see uh what what happens with those guys but i think it's a certainly uh I mean, if how how far back are you going? Because uh, never never able to get one. Well, this is really the first time we've had them coming in to look at us. Frankly, well, they, right? Yeah, they, they had. They, well, they had Antoine Hill committed, yeah. right? And yeah. Yeah. that was with the situation he was going to reclassify to twenty twenty four. He was going to come in, be Shadur Sanders' understudy, 
Antoine Hill decided that he was not going to reclassify and, you know, both uh, have gone in in a different direction. And then you had Underwood who, who visited Colorado and he's an LSU commit. Uh, but no, I mean, I've said this all along. If Colorado achieves their goals this fall right. and they win as many games as a lot of us expect to, if they win eight, nine, 10 games, then quarterback recruiting is going to take care of itself, whether that's through the prep ranks. Julian Lewis is still in play. He's going to take an official visit to Colorado on June 21st. Uh, just an elite level quarterback prospect that could come in and challenge from day one. Um, right. And none of these four and five star quarterbacks in the 2025 class have signed with anybody because they can't until December. Uh, yeah. So it's all verbal at this point. You take care of things. And I, I feel very confidently that Colorado is going to have a decent quarterback lined up to replace Shador Sanders. That could be also through the portal. So we'll see yeah. uh, how this kind of plays out. And I mentioned they're going to be a player in the spring transfer window for quarterback. So um, I get it. You want to have that position solidified for the next four or five years. It's just, it's not the reality right now. So you've just got to be patient with it. And uh, I really think, it comes down to them uh, winning football games this fall, and that is going to take care of itself. Yeah, I think if you see Shador Standard light, lighten it up uh, behind a, a much more solid offensive line, and then he's gone, there's nobody on this roster coming back that anybody that's a four- and five-star guy is going to be afraid of. There's nobody on this roster that you have to beat out, frankly. So I, I think they're going to line up and want to come here once they see uh, an offense that's actually working and, and we're winning some games. Fred Folsom asked, what do the Panda GIFs even mean? I am out of the loop. He's talking about on the inside yeah. the herd message board on buffstampede.com. Uh, there has been uh, a, a run of Panda GIFs on there. And basically what that means is that uh, uh, somebody's posting something that's already been addressed on the message board at a yeah. previous time. Now, I think at some point, maybe this needs to run its course because we have a merge topics tool that sometimes I can't use because it's all Panda GIFs and like it would be confusing if I merged them. So hopefully we can move past this at some point. Do you, do you have anything you want to add here? Well, I'm, I'm on the team that calls them GIFs because uh, if you put a T in there, it's GIFs, right? So if you take the T out, why would it not be? Anyway, that's, that's neither here nor there. But yeah, it's it's for <laughs> redundant it, it's 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 basically like saying, "Hey, somebody already." It's it's like the 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 one from um, Dumb and Dumber, where you know when he's land, some man landed on the moon. No way! It's like, wow, you really you're bringing that up, huh? You're just figuring that one out. <laughs> well, some people can't live on the message board, and so I kind of understand that part of it too, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. And I I think they're you know they tend to be more often for like if you just scroll down the, the list of titles, you see it's already there, but. Uh, part of that's on on us we don't have a, a very good we don't really have a search function so uh, hopefully we can get one of those one of these days on 24 7 sports florida buff asked are the recent additions to the 2024 recruiting class an attempt to find hidden gems overlooked by college football on the whole or are they an attempt to find necessary depth also stark florida seems like exactly the place to look for overlooked talent the part where he says is this an attempt to find necessary depth i would say no there where they're attempting to find necessary depth is through the transfer portal uh are they trying to find hidden gems overlooked by college football on the whole yes and devin wrist press coming over from famu um, is maybe a little part of that, you know, he had evaluated some guys in that state that, you know, they've, they've added to this class, a couple guys, cornerbacks that they've added late to this class. And, um, uh, you know, if, if it works out, it's a great story. Kind of like Yaya right. Tia, if that works out, it's a great story. If it doesn't work out, it's not going to necessarily uh, tie you up for four to five years because of the way that the transfer portal is utilized these these years and it's not always you having to kick the player away usually it's them saying i'm not going to play here and then they move on and i'm not saying that's necessarily going to happen with these late additions but uh the days of panicking over the fact that you took a flyer and a couple guys that were you know quote hidden gems is, is really not that big of a deal nowadays 
Yeah, and they're not. It's not. It's not the wasted scholarship anymore, given with the portal. But you know, I mean, let's stop and look at what we got here too. I mean, look at three guys. You got two cornerbacks that are both six foot two, and if there's any position that I'm going to trust Deion Sanders to recruit and to uh, evaluate, it's cornerback, right? So you got two six two cornerbacks, and you got an offensive lineman that, to me, looks like a guy who can play right away. And he got missed because he plays in London. So uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, people on the board saying it, it, it reminds them of uh, 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 Carl Durrell recruiting. Kind of doesn't make any much any sense to me. It's like there are three guys. Uh, it's clearly late in the, you know, it's well past the signing day for this class, and they found some guys they think they can play for us. So I, I don't have a problem with any one of those three guys. I think all three of them look, uh, you know, again, I don't know. I, I'm not the first, I don't have the first clue how to evaluate a defensive back, but uh, Deion Sanders certainly does, you know, but that, that you know, Atia kid from London to me is as good an offensive lineman as we've signed in a long time. And we got a chance to do a film room on him. So definitely make sure to look out for that later this week. Some, some good stuff from William kind of breaking down his film. We got one more question from Nepper. He asked about other Big 12 programs. And I'm just going to be flat out honest. I have not done a deep dive on other Big 12 programs. And there's this transfer portal window. Like, I'm going to dive into that lean on other 24-7 sports publishers as we get into the summer months. I'll be out in Las Vegas for Big 12 Media Day. Uh, and so we'll be tackling all those storylines right now. It's my focus is on Colorado spring ball and this transfer portal. And, and we'll get there at some point. Uh, I, I think the general feeling is that there's going to be a lot of parody in the big 12. There's probably going to be 10 to 12 fan bases that going into the season, think they have a chance to win the conference. I think there's going to be a lot of riveting football. I think the conference is going to cannibalize itself. Like we saw at times when Colorado was in the PAC 12. Uh, but again, I, I go back to the fact that I think it's going to be riveting football. I think it's going to be uh, a fun season upcoming. Yeah. I, I, I'm thrilled to be done with the PAC 12 and uh, the, the only, the only question. Not, not yet though. Cause the, we got the, the PAC 12 network spring game, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, yeah. And, and you know, the bit, the big question to me is, um, is there a more punchable, is there a punchable coach in the big 12 to take the place of our favorite guy? <laughs> yet to be determined. I, I'm going to be out at uh big 12 media day and I'm going to, I'm going to be, uh, giving you a few nominations because I had I done that last year out in Vegas, Dan Lanning, we probably don't need to go down this Avenue every show, but <laughs> I, I would, my wife and I were talking about like, cause she was there photographing the whole event and we we're just like, yeah, that guy. No. <laughs> uh, uh, so I'll, I'll get, I'll get back to you with some candidates okay. there in, in the big 12. Uh, and just to close out this show, William, I, I want to know what what are you hoping to see out of the spring game? Well, you know, I mean, it's kind of, it's same thing you always say in spring: no injuries, and let's see some competition and just have some fun with it. Uh, I don't know; it, it's it's hard to know what you're seeing in spring because you're going against yourself. So, if the offense is great, does that mean the defense is bad, or vice versa, or what have you? I'd like to see real competition up front um, with the offensive and defensive lines. Um, and uh, I don't know, I, I always take the spring game with a grain of salt and just look yeah. for some, some fun with it and see, you know, there's always some guys that stand out and have a big game. And um, I don't know, I, I, frankly, quite frankly, this this time around, it's the pageantry of it, you know, with the way that they're doing it and all the recruits coming in, that's more fun and exciting to me. I don't think there's a whole lot to be taken out of the game itself, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, it, it is a glorified practice. And so, uh Anything we analyze too intently on April 27th is probably on some level overanalyzing things. But if they do go ones versus twos like they do in most practices and scrimmages under Coach Prime, I think given that a lot of your depth isn't on campus yet, you know, the, we talked yeah. about Will Shepard and BJ Green, and you've got some other guys banged up like a Tyler Johnson and Arden Walker. And then, you know, some of that depth that's there now might be hitting the portal in the next couple of weeks. I think you want to see those first teams be relatively dominant, right? In, in yeah. that setting, if they're going against the twos that don't have all their depth. And I, I think, once you get into camp and you have that depth, then all of a sudden you want a little bit more of that back and forth. Uh, but I, I think 
that would be kind of my expectation is you, you do want to see the, the, the one units really uh, stand kind of head and shoulders above the, the second and third units. Uh, you know, that being said, like the one position that I want to keep an eye on when the twos are out, if, if if the starting offensive line is what we're seeing right now, I want to see what you carry Walker does against the first team defensive line. Does he show me something that suggests that uh, he can take that spot away from Zelenskis? I mean, I think it's better for everybody if, if, if the competition is ongoing. So I think there are positions that you want to watch, um, you know, the matchups maybe between some guys and see what happens with them. Well, my phone has not gone off while we done this, did this show, so uh, I don't think anybody's hit the the transfer portal from Colorado yet. But uh, again, it's it, it promises to be kind of a crazy stretch here the next couple of weeks with all the practices, with the transfer portal recruiting, and, and even on the men's basketball side, you know they had a couple transfer visitors on campus this last weekend. So uh, a busy time now as you know the, these programs solidify their roster for for the upcoming season. Yeah, it'd be a fun time, and uh, hopefully you got your taxes done so that we don't lose you, you know, to the IRS. And uh, well, <laughs> I have Washington. them mostly done. I have I, I'm going to su submit them though before the the deadline hits. Before the end of the day, okay. Well, good good for you. We, we don't want to lose you, so I think it'd be a fun time. I think there'd be some excitement, some some surprises, and in both incoming and outgoing. And uh, you know, like you said, we'll get to summer and see where we are uh, overall. Um, with people leaving and people staying. But I, I think, I think as you pointed out, I think at the start, you know, we're better than last spring. We're better than last fall. And if we just keep improving each time, you know, we're going to get where we want to be. Definitely. Well, William, that was a lot of fun. And again, we did a film room on Yaya Atia. So look for that later this week. Always appreciate you for, for taking time out. Oh, it's always my pleasure. Glad to be here. Awesome. And thanks everybody out there for tuning in.